Hi, I'm Julian Wright from the Advocate newspaper. You're about to see a story I've done on Pauline Edwards. She's a member of the Senior Storytellers One Districts branch. Uh, this group of uh, seniors go around to primary schools in the area and they um, explain to children um, how they grew up, uh, what country they came from. Generally, just people in the community have fascinating stories um, and childhoods. Um, Pauline Edwards moved to Australia from England uh, 22 years ago and she said that um, a lot of the students are very fascinated by the fact that she lived through World War II. Um, here is uh, an interview with her. Talking about the early days when we started school, what we did out of school, uh, holidays, um, usually the stories uh, go towards what age group we're having so the six or seven year olds, it's different to when we have um, years, what, seven or six, seven. So we talk of different things then. Um, so tell me about your uh, father, like uh, what was he interested in? What was he interested in? Well, he worked in the factory all his life, uh, Massey Ferguson tractors. Uh, but when he was 18, he wanted to play the piano. So he went to the top teacher in Coventry and said, I'd like to learn to play the piano, and, uh, but I can't afford what you're charging. So she said, uh, oh, hmm. So he said, well, I can give you, say it was a pound a lesson, I can give you 10 shillings. And she saw he was interested, so she took him on. And when he, from 18 until 22 I believe he got his first diploma which was first set of letters and the year later he got his licentiate which is the final one which enabled him to teach piano and um, he, he used to go as a pianist to various venues mainly um, because later on when my brother was born and myself um, he wanted to make money to send us to university if we had the ability. My brother had the ability, it cost him a fortune. But I started dancing and uh, the uh, same amount of money more or less was sent me dancing, which I danced until I was 19. Um, as I say, he worked in a factory all his life. Um, he was a lot of fun. We didn't have a holiday every year because he could only take us away once every two years. Um, and keeping in mind the years that we were born, you know, there was rationing on. We talked to the children about rationing too. Um, and he really was an, a, an intelligent man. But my brother won a scholarship to the top grammar school which my father had won one all those years before, but he came from a poor family, so his mother couldn't afford to send them to, you know, to the grammar school. Um, but when my brother came home from London University each time, he was taking law. He, um, he read those books avidly, and he could talk about them, which was great. Uh, he always had old cars, mind you. And could never afford a new one. So uh, what do you hope to achieve from doing the storytelling at the schools? I think maybe to give the children an understanding of their grandparents and, and their parents' lives, what they did, um, how different it is. Um, whether we tell them whether we enjoyed it or not. I mean, I thoroughly enjoyed school. Um, and I think to give them an understanding of their backgrounds and their, their um, where they came from, what's given them what they are today. And I think that's what we need to do because it, it's um, intercultural. So it doesn't matter where you come from, everybody's got a story. So, um, you know, like me, I'm from England. We have an Italian lady in one of the groups, different background altogether. Uh, lots of Australians, of course, um, country, town, all the stories are different, but in some ways, in the country areas, the same. 
wherever they came from, their difficulties and their things that went on are exactly the same. Cities and towns are different, different in Australia to in England or Italy or anywhere else. You can find this story and more in the next edition of The Advocate newspaper.